Manic Monday on Digital Charcuterie. Here we go. It's James joined with Andrew Fantasia. We're going to let the good times roll today. We got a bunch of really fun topics to discuss as of now. Andrew, it's Monday. How was your weekend? My weekend was lazy and not much happened, but I'm looking forward to, as you put it, letting the good times roll today and tomorrow, because tomorrow you are an even older man than you are today. Isn't that right? Sure. Yeah, tomorrow, this will be our last broadcast on this channel, because tomorrow I won't be able to know how to use the internet. That's it. It's not, I'm going to be that old. I'll be like, how do you get on the Wi-Fi? And that's how it's going to go tomorrow. Yes, tomorrow. Is old man James Day. Your old man day came and went. Yeah. Uh, I tried to get you to record and you blocked me, actually. You blocked my phone number and my friendship. Yeah. The strip club was just having a birthday deal and I couldn't pass it. Oh my God, you got a pipe. <laughs> I got this. I got this pipe for a murder mystery I hosted like four years ago. That's right. And it's here. Yeah. And it's just here. Anyway, yeah, that's my pipe. All right, let's get on with the show. Uh, Andrew, you have uh, Infinity Rewatch, which you do it. Are you doing it on Wednesdays now on the ch- on Wednesdays on the channel? Yes, because I'm on my summer hours now, which means yeah. I don't work most Wednesdays, so I can do it on the Wednesday night. Yeah, so Wednesday night, Infinity Rewatch, you guys, you and Ryan, you guys break down the episode. You do this for all the Marvel shows. If you guys haven't seen it, you got to check it out. All the Marvel shows get broken down, and, and your podcasts are actually 12 times longer than the shows that you watch. Yes. So you get You get to know everything. And and Ryan has a really steep knowledge in, in in Marvel, and you like Robert Downey Jr. And so that's how you guys bring <laughs> your every episode begins with "Where was Robert?" <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, it's really good. You guys should check that out. But I want to talk because I saw this was tweeted uh, out the other day uh, by I think it was Culture Crave tweeted this out. I mean, I think this has been tweeted by a billion people, but they have these stats here, so they're like. Uh, Ms. Marvel's premiere was watched by uh, 775,000 households in the first five days, the lowest debut for live action MCU, which is whatever. We'll get into that in a little bit. I don't know if that's a big deal. And I mean, Ms. Marvel is like, it, for, for, the, for me, for the trailer, it looked like the show was not geared towards me. But anyway, we'll, we'll get into that later. Uh, so Ms. Marvel, 775,000 is the lowest above, just above that. Is Hawkeye with 1.5 million. WandaVision was 1.6 million. But I think WandaVision, you also have to take into consideration that it was only a year into Disney Plus. They didn't have the subscriber base that they had. Then yeah. there's Falcon and Winter Soldier, which is 1.8. So it probably had more subscribers. So that, to me, that would affect that. Um, this one shocked me though. So number one is Loki with 2.5 million and everyone knows Loki is the reason why they moved all their stupid release dates to Wednesdays instead of Fridays, which I hate because I like having the weekend shows. Uh, but Loki was huge. I mean, that's not a surprise, but Moon Knight number two with 1.8. So it, it tied Falcon and Winter Soldier, which for the number two, which to me is, is kind of massive like that for me, like, cause Moon Knight. I think the trailer for Moon Knight, I haven't even seen Moon Knight or Ms. Marvel, so I'm kind of indifferent in what I'm going to say. But the trailer for Moon Knight actually uh, appealed to me more than the Ms. Marvel trailer. trailer did. The Ms. Marvel trailer to me seemed like if I had kids and it was like a family affair, that's more what that was geared towards. So the numbers, the low numbers kind of surprised me to that um, extent. But the, the Moon Knight number is massive uh, in comparison to the rest of them. Yeah, Moon Knight is shocking to me. Uh, I'm on the other side of that. I actually like the Miss Marvel trailer better than the Moon Knight trailer. Uh, it just felt more like a fun Marvel trailer to me. Moon Knight felt a little darker and just just different. Not bad, but just different. It came um, out in that time when Batman came out, man. Everybody wanted dark and gloomy. That's like, right. No yeah. more fun. No more fun. And I love that. We both love the Batman. But the trailer. No more. The trailer for Moon Knight actually was two hours and 47 minutes long because I was trying to emulate Batman perfectly. Um, yeah, you're right. It's weird because with Moon Knight, we had to, on Infinity Rewatch, we had to make a video. And by we, I mean Ryan, because he is a much smarter man than I am. But he had to make a video saying, hey, I know you probably don't know who Moon Knight is. So just in case you don't, here's the deal. Yeah. Whereas with all those other shows, everybody knew who Wanda was. Everybody knew who Hawkeye was. So the fact that Moon Knight, a character not on a whole lot of radars, was pulling in 1.8 million for its opening, like that is, I, 
I I have to just assume that that is coming from just Oscar Isaac's name because not only is the character very, very unknown, but the show and its trailers were not even promising like, ooh, Nick Fury's going to show up. Like it wasn't that kind of show. It well, was that's very a, see, And I don't have them in front of me, but I would be curious to see how, how that show held up through week to week because – one thing I can tell you, I've never seen... So, the only MCU shows I've seen are WandaVision and mm. Hawkeye. And now everyone's calling me a hater, but I'm not. It's just I haven't watched them. Mm. Part, of the, part of the reason why I didn't watch them was Falcon and Winter Soldier came out. And a minute into me being awake, I saw the entire plot written online. Spoiler pictures online. Like, I know what happens in that show, and I've never had to watch an episode. Loki, same thing. Loki comes out. Here's a picture. Here's the plot of that episode alligator loki great like i don't need to see any of loki because i've seen all of loki without having to see any of loki like i know everything that happened in loki hawkeye i watched because it's christmas and i had christmas carols and i'm a sucker but um but moon knight i feel like i could go into it and with the exception of the hippo spoilers for moon knight i suppose with the exception of the hippo i don't really know what happened in moon knight because people online didn't seem to be talking about it as much as the other one. So I'm curious to see how the numbers held up for it. Uh, and, and now, cause I know you really like, you like the show quite a bit, right? Yeah. I like the show. I like the pregnancy hippo. I like Oscar Isaac. Um, I think the reason though, that there was no sort of online spoiling of the plot is honestly, the plot of that show is very sparse. It's very simple. It's just, um, I'm not going to spoil it for you, but it's it's literally just a guy coping with stuff. Um, and there just happens to be Egyptian gods involved during all that coping. Uh, and so a simple show with no big ties to the MCU and not a whole lot of people familiar with the character, that adds up to like a crazy cocktail that just makes it all the more impressive. But Hey, good for Moon Knight, man. I'm glad it did well. So and, it, mm -hmm. sorry, it finished below Falcon and Winter Soldier for the entire viewership, but okay. above but above Hawkeye. And obviously it didn't touch Loki. Yeah. And it didn't and actually I don't think it beat WandaVision either. WandaVision looked like it went up as time went on. Which makes sense for that show because that show started black and white. People were like, what is this? I don't want to watch it. And then and then, and also viewers also uh subscriber numbers also would have risen throughout its run as well does it also do you have to take into account that wandavision is longer than those other shows no it doesn't matter hmm. uh maybe i don't know i'm just going by what they're saying on this website that i'm reading i mean you only tr i trust everything i read online so there's no reason to everything what, especially yeah, fox course. news i read them all the time there's no reason to debate what uh, what's being said. But I find these numbers fascinating. But Ms. Marvel, 775,000, the lowest of them all. What what would you, because you saw it, obviously, you did your seven-hour Infinity Rewatch podcast on it. Which, <laughs> but but you saw it, obviously. And, and so what's your takeaway from, just briefly on the episode for those who haven't listened to that podcast, but also, like, what would you make of these numbers? Would they concern you if you were Marvel? Or would you say, eh, it's Ms. Marvel? I think the numbers are kind of sad, to be honest, because I think the Miss Marvel pilot opened really strongly. Uh, in fact, I can't think of another one of the pilots that was as interesting oh, wow. as the Miss Marvel pilot. Uh, Falcon and Moon Knight and WandaVision all started off kind of slow. Uh, so you have shows that kind of were crescendoing, they were a slow boil, but Miss Marvel right out of the gate, I, I guess I assume the writers knew, okay, this is not a popular character either. She's only been around for like a decade. So it's not like there's years of fans who have been waiting to see her. So they made that first episode super, uh, like fun and colorful and exciting. And they put in a lot of intriguing tidbits in there. Uh, and very emotional. It felt kind of like a Pixar movie. Um, and it it had that quality to it where it, I, I, and I think they sold it this way too. I felt this way in the trailer where 
it doesn't feel like they're just trying to be like, this is something for your tween kid to watch. It felt like something for everybody to watch. Um, and that, I think, again, I think that comes across in the trailer. The trailer to me does not feel like something that's geared for your kids. So if it was that, then I'd be like, okay, now I understand why the numbers are a little low because maybe some adults were like, ah, whatever, I'm just going to watch Pam and Tommy instead because that one has a talking penis. But Miss Marvel is a fun show that's well executed and it's from episode one, it stands up with all the other Marvel shows. Like it is a Marvel quality piece of work. So I, uh, I'm sad that it's got these low numbers and I'm hoping it's not just like a bunch of, you know, bitter dudes who didn't like the Captain Marvel movie. So they're just not watching out of spite because I would be sad and stupid. Yeah. I, you say, so people were complaining that they changed her powers from the comics. And my argument was nobody has read the comics. So why is anybody caring about it? And, and I mean that, I don't mean any disrespect to that. Like you said, it's 10 years old, mm -hmm. right? Like, I know the actress playing her love Ms. Marvel. She dressed up for her for Halloween a few years ago. Like that's documented and all that. But I mean, she's not Spider-Man. They didn't go like, well, instead of Spider-Man having spider senses, he's going to have wings. Like they didn't change it like that. And so I don't, I, I, I don't know. My argument is I don't think that matters too much how they changed her powers because not enough. I just don't think not enough people are aware. I mean, she is in, that video game, I think Scotty or somebody pointed out, she's in the Avengers video game or something like that. So maybe people know her powers from that. But it's like, I just to me, that seemed like a stupid argument. And if you're not going to watch a show because of that, that's even weirder. Um, do you think there's a possibility that there might just be too much Marvel going on right now? Like Marvel might be, they might be spreading themselves a little too thin because we just had Moon Knight followed immediately by Doctor Strange 2, which is immediately coming on Disney+, Plus, which is immediately leading into Thor, which is immediately leading into She-Hulk, which is immediately... Like, it's just non-stop. But it's like, and is there just not an urgency to watch them right away anymore? Maybe that is the case for the low numbers. Maybe you're right. Maybe there's urgency. Um, you know, it stops being an event if it's happening every month, right? If there's something new every month, it's not, you know, um, something to count down the days for um i think the question of is it too much i don't know that always that always kind of irked me when something is like consistently great it's like oh man more orgasms really um i i think we need to look at it as a hindsight thing like we don't know where they're going we don't know what this saga is what story they're trying to tell so maybe they need a lot of pieces to this story. Um, but as far as just affecting the numbers, yeah, I can totally see why people would be like, wow, there's a lot of Marvel right now. I am not, uh, you know, I, I have other things I want to prioritize. So I'm not going to watch this one particular show right away because I know there's another one coming in a month. I get that. That makes total sense. Yeah. I mean, and also my thing is, you know, I, I'm not a summer TV guy. Like I'm like, I'm from the 80s. And back, you know, growing <laughs> up, it was like in the summer, all shows ended in like May. Mm -hmm. And in the summer was repeats and the news and, and baseball. You didn't watch anything else. Like that was it. It was like baseball. And then that's all you watched. That's so, why baseball was so much more interesting back then. Because there was actually, nothing else no, to watch. No, back then it was mostly on the radio. I think we only got like six televised games growing up. But it was like, mm -hmm. what? I, but it, yeah, there was no, well, there was only like four channels. So the thing is, is, is there's just so much the weather's nice people go it's like why would i watch this right now i can watch it later so i think there's a lot of factors into it i think if if ms marvel was maybe moon knight maybe even you know spider-man like i said or something a little bit more known it might have done better i'm curious if they're going to look at this with their iron heart uh, show that they're doing and some other shows that might not be as as well known coming into it like maybe they'll rethink when they release them but i guess time's going to tell on that I guess so, but honestly, I hope that, um, and I just made a video to this effect on my YouTube channel, but I hope that numbers like this are, uh, as far as like Feige and his team are concerned, I hope that these kind of numbers take a backseat to the story they're trying to tell. Uh, if they have a great idea and they are working towards it right now, I hope they don't backpedal 
just because a bunch of bitter dudes decided not to watch Miss Marvel for a month. You know what I mean? Like, don't sacrifice the story just because a small percentage of fans were like, eh, I don't care for that. Well, I think that's the other problem that fans are having right now is they don't know what the story is because there's been no indication, no hints as to what they're building towards, right? Uh-huh. Everything kind of feels like it's all over the place. So there's no – it's not like – and I, I actually prefer, prefer it that way. But it's not like with Same. the Infinity Saga we are like, oh, everything's going – got to see this. Otherwise, we won't understand that. If we don't understand that, we can't see it. It's not like that, right? It almost feels like if you, like I, if you didn't see – I mean, I know Loki kind of bleeds into Spider-Man, but it doesn't. You could totally watch Spider-Man without seeing Loki or knowing what happened in Loki. And I know that from watching it with people who have no idea that Loki's even a show right now. Like, they didn't even know that it was a thing. And, and they watched Spider-Man and they loved it. Because even though, you know, well, at the end of Loki, what's his face? Uh, it's like, that doesn't even matter, All like in Spider-Man. You know what I mean? Like, Spider-Man yeah. did its own thing. And 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 I, from what I've heard about Doctor Strange, is it kind of does its own thing as well where you might want to watch the other stuff, but it doesn't really matter too much. So I, I just, I think that's one thing right now that's that could be hurting these numbers also is they don't know how this show plays into Moon Knight, which, like you just said, didn't really play into anything, or is going to play into um, Thor, Love and Thunder, or She-Hulk or anything coming up. So so why rush watch? I think people will watch it eventually. It's just why, why rush it? Yeah. Yeah, there's no need to rush. People are doing their own thing. June is a busy month for kids the same age as Miss Marvel because, you know, they're finishing school, they got exams, whatever. So I get it. Maybe they got other things to go uh, kind of take priority. But um, let uh, let the story unravel itself before, uh, yeah. you know, before we backpedal and cancel movies or do things like that. Don't, don't. My don't, one, uh, don't be WB Disney. Is what I'm saying. My 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 <laughs> main my main concern. No, I don't think they're gonna back. My main concern though would be the release structure where this release when Obi Wan Kenobi release and now is Disney not Marvel is Disney gonna say oh we can't have two shows on the same day, which is ridiculous to me because I think Apple releases all of their shows on the same day, and it's like. You know, and Netflix doesn't. I mean, Netflix is Netflix, and they're losing all their viewership. So maybe that's not a right, the right way to go. But you know, it's like, you no, know, you can release stuff on the same day. You don't have to watch it at the same time. I would, I would suggest releasing the stuff in the East Coast at midnight, and what because it's just stupid. Like I said, like three. In, I'm not waking up at three in the morning to watch a show like half of social media does. And so by the time I'm up, the whole show is spoiled. On Star Wars days, I don't even look at. I can't go online until after I've watched the show. Because it's it's disgusting what people how people don't care about other like just don't care. But anyway, that, that's the one thing I just hope Disney doesn't because Disney's very good at knee jerk reactions. Very good at knee jerk rea- Very good. <laughs> I mean, I mean, they just anyway. Let's move on to Shredder's Revenge, a Ninja Turtle game in that has been you know that they announced like seven hundred years ago. It feels like. They were like, hey, we're going to have a Shredder Revenge. I got to tell you, my history with Ninja Turtle games, Fantasia came, goes way, way back to before, like when you were probably a year old around there. I had this comic book. It was a comic book with Spider-Man, Punisher, Kingpin, Cloak and Dagger. They were all in it. It was a great comic. It was my first superhero comic book. Before You that, had me at Kingpin. I only had Transformers and Archie comics before that. But this one, I was like seven years old and I got this. I got this Spider-Man comic. And, and in the front page of this comic, you open it up, Ninja Turtles on NES. And I was like, what is this? And for like a year, I think it was like a year or six months. When you're a kid, you don't understand. You don't have the concept of time. So it was whatever it was. I got it for the for Christmas, either that Christmas, six months later, or Christmas um, the following year. I got Ninja Turtles on the, on the NES, which is the hardest video game until Battletoads came along. It's like... <laughs> they were like trying to one up each other on hardness, but then on difficulty, hardness sounds inappropriate. But then Ninja Turtles, the arcade game, I don't know if it came out before or after. I've never looked into it. I don't care because it came out to me after because I went in. I had a, a, a convenience store, Andrew, in Brampton, where I grew up, called Jug City. Terrible place. They used to yes. rip kids off. They used to rip the kids off all the time. It's gone now, by the way. Yeah, it's gone. Well, they were dickheads. They used to rip us all <laughs> off. We would go in with a dollar and we'd buy something for a, for a dime and they would. That's how old this was. And they would give us like a quarter back and then your dad would have to run in and like yell at them every time. It happened every time. But they had Ninja Turtles, the arcade game right there. And you would line up and you would play it. 
and that was my favorite video game ever. Then it came out on Nintendo, obviously. And Ninja Turtle video games for years were amazing. And then they had a couple stinkers. And then when I got my DS, my sister got me a DS for Christmas years ago. It was a random gift. And she was like, couldn't get you a Mario Brother game. These games are too expensive. So I got you this. And it was Ninja Turtles Arcade Attack. And I was like, it was so much fun. I don't know if it's not really a good game, but I had so much fun because it was like a cheap version of the arcade game. And you just, it was side scrolling and you could be two of them and you'd walk side, but it was awesome. And Ninja Turtles are some of my favorite video games. I just think they they crush it. And the, the fact that there's four of them, but now obviously in Shredder's Revenge, you could be six. But the fact that there's four turtles always made multiplayer so much fun. Uh, I did beat Ninja Turtles, the arcade game, last summer during my friend Brock's bachelor party. They had it and it was... <laughs> You got all free continues. So we did beat the game. After 40 years, it was finally beat. Uh, but Shredder Revenge came out. I pre-ordered it. I haven't even had a chance to play it yet. I've been so busy. And I was going to play it. And then you were like, oh, the voices and the music are so good. And then I was like, oh, no. I'm going to have to actually have the audio up to play like, loud to play it and enjoy it properly. So I didn't want to play it on silence. So I haven't had a chance to play it yet. But, but I want to hear your thoughts on the game. Oh, boy. Okay. I don't even know where to start with this. First of all, Jug City, let me just preface this. Uh, you're right, that that was not the, the best store. That was where <laughs> I bought my first Pokemon <laughs> cards, was at Jug City, and there were the fake purple ones that uh, were going around at the time that were like They were fake Pokemon cards. <laughs> yeah, they were bootleg ones, and uh, I didn't know any better. Uh, so that was Jug City's legacy, folks. It's gone now. But uh, to think that that used to have an arcade machine in it once upon a time, that's just, I right wish I could door. have seen the 80s as much as you saw the 80s. I think that probably would, that probably would have been nice. It was right at the front door. So you walked in that front door. Did it go to the left or anywhere? Then yeah. The front door, and it was right there. It was right there, and then you would line up and, wow. and play it. Yeah, and then you would refuse to, you would buy like a pack of gum if you had to wait long. Or like it was like uh, gold gum. It came in like a gold, like a bag, and they were shaped like gold. It was freaking stupid. Or Big League Chew, which is the dopest of the dope. Big League Chew. That's like fruit by the foot, but you can't ingest it. That's, that's, uh... <laughs> I don't think you can ingest fruit by the foot. <laughs> oh, boy. So the, this Turtles game, um, I, I didn't own any Turtles games ever, really. My cousins had that NES one. Uh, we never beat it because we're not masochists, so we were never able to get through it. So hard. Oh, God. But um, I've played a bunch of them. I've played Turtles in Time, which is the one everybody loves, but very sparingly because I never had an SNES. Um, the Turtles, to me, were always synonymous with the, the late 1980s to that magic sort of part of that era that to me is it just lives in this rose tinted part of my brain that I was just old enough to remember but not old enough to appreciate because I was born in 87. So this game comes along, Shredder's Revenge, and it's not even something that I was like ravenously looking forward to. It's just something I would keep seeing on like my Instagram feed because I follow a turtles feed. And yeah, like, I don't oh, think yeah, it was gonna I didn't think it was coming out. I thought it was a hoax. <laughs> yeah, it's, 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 people keep talking about it. And I'm like, wow, this is still not out. Like I've been seeing nothing but but pictures of this game, whatever. And then I just happened to get a free, uh, not free, but like for $1, I got three months of Xbox Game Pass and it was on there. So I'm like, oh, damn. Okay, well, well let's see what this game's all about because I got it for a dollar. Why not? So I downloaded it. I played it. And just from minute one, James, from that first level, I'm like, this is not just a celebration of the Ninja Turtles, but it's specifically a celebration of the Ninja Turtles cartoon, the original cartoon. They have the four voice actors back voicing the turtles. Um, they could not use any kind of witchcraft to resurrect James Avery, unfortunately. So Shredder is somebody else, but he doesn't talk much anyway. So it's not a big deal. But the fact that you've got the OG voice actors voicing the turtles and all the characters that you can think of pop up at some point in this game from the show to the point where you have like these little moments of, oh my God, it's blank. Um, you, it's, I've never, I never expected this to be that because all the Turtles games I played have just felt very generic. Like it doesn't necessarily feel like this is the game of the show or this is the game of the secret of the use. This is a hundred percent the game of that cartoon. Uh, and it gives you everything you could have ever wanted 
uh, like as if it's making up for lost time. That's the best way I can put it. It feels like it understands that fans of the show haven't seen the aspects of that show in a long time and fans of the three original movies missed out on a lot of stuff over the years because the, the movies didn't really give them what they wanted. It feels like they understood that when they made this game and they're just like, here's everything you want in this package and it's colorful and it looks good and it sounds good and it's fun to play. Um, I've only played as Raphael and Leonardo so far. Um, I'm really looking forward to playing a splinter though, because that's exciting to me. Um, but did yeah, you beat it? I did beat it. Yeah. Would you say it's too short? For me, a hundred percent. I I would not pay more than 10 bucks for this game in terms of length, because it's just it is, it's way too short. There's there's nothing really to keep you coming back except to try out the other characters, which is fun, I'll admit. But just I don't say this as a knock to the game itself. I just say this as the kind of person I am and the kind of games I like and that I would spend money on. This is a $10 game. Tops. That's ex that's exactly so. Steve uh, on Super Tuesdays, he, he, he was looking forward to this game. He got it. And he was loving it. And he goes, I give it a 6.5 out of 10. I go, what? He goes, it's too short. I shouldn't have paid more than 10 bucks for this. That's what he said. Mm -hmm. So, and you just said $10. And you haven't talked to him about it. And you both said $10. So I paid full price. So go to hell. Um, Look at it this way. This is the way I put it. Um, this game came out in 2022 uh, on whatever, I, I don't know technical stuff, but okay, let's say you have it on your PlayStation and, and it was made using whatever engine. The fact that it is shorter, significantly shorter than River City Ransom, which came out on the NES in like 1988, that to me is like a no-no. Like, you now have the ability to make the game as big as you want. Make it big. Why not? Give people their money's worth. Okay. Well, I'm all about retro games and uh, stuff like that. So I'm looking forward to it. And I like short games. I'm a half-hour gamer. Everyone knows I'm a half-hour gamer. So I'm going to play it as much as possible. All right. So I'm going to talk a little bit of kind of spoilery things about this game. Now that James has walked away, I hope he can't hear me. And uh, when he comes back, and hopefully he doesn't edit this video and sees or hears spoilers, but if you liked the cartoon, I'm talking the 80s cartoon, uh, this game is full of stuff from that cartoon and then some. It's just, it's full of retro turtles. That's the best way I can put it. Uh, there was an one episode of the show where there's a villain named Tempestra who comes out of an arcade machine and Leonardo wants to beat her because he's like obsessed with getting a high score. Tempestra's a boss on one of the levels of this. Of course, you get Bebop and Rocksteady. Of course, they're there and you fight them multiple times, which is really groovy. Um, but then you get other little tidbits like Taka and Razar from Turtles 2 Secret of the Ooze. And even the final boss is an homage to Turtles 2 Secret of the Ooze. There's so much going on in this game that is specifically intended to point at you if you're a turtle fan, a retro turtle fan, and say, hey, we got you. We got you. Come here. Come to this warm, candy-colored world. Everything's going to be okay for an hour and a half, which is about as long as it takes to beat the game. Um, and I think that the choice they made to set this game in the setting of that show, not just the characters and the aesthetic, but like the the show was an 80s show, so it always looked like the 80s when we were watching it, the, the cars in the show, the buildings, whatever. And that resonates here. There's no point where like Donatello picks up an iPad and he's like, oh boy, it's the future. No, they are setting it not just in the world of that show, but in the time period of that show. And that might not mean anything to a lot of people, but to me, I don't know, it's that's part of the charm of turtles to me is that to me it's always going to be an 80s franchise so seeing the game embrace that it's a beautiful thing i just talked some spoilers james some very light spoilers so don't scrub i back heard it all all right i heard it all i heard it all all right that's good anyway everybody go check out get that game but don't pay more than ten dollars if you do you are a sucker Last week, Mr. Fantasia, it was uh, reported or 
in reports, I think it was Deadline or Hollywood Reporter, or somebody said that uh, Joker 2 is that. Well, Todd Phillips, Joker 2, Joaquin Phoenix. And then the reports came out that Lady Gaga was in talks to play the female lead, which everybody is assuming is Harley Quinn. I don't think it was ever officially stated it was Harley Quinn. But also it would be a musical. <laughs> Joker 2 would be a musical with Lady Gaga and Joaquin Phoenix. You are not the biggest Joker fan. Uh, what were your thoughts on all that? Well, my friend Benjamin is the biggest Joker fan. He loves Joker and Harley so much. And I think I told you this when we heard about the story breaking. But I asked him over a decade ago, James, before Margot Robbie was ever in the picture, I asked this guy, I was like, okay, so we've seen Joker in, in 25 movies, but uh, I said, we've never seen Harley. Who would you cast? Because as a big Harley Quinn fan, I know he would he would have issues with a lot of actors. So I was like, who is your pick? If you got the choice, who would you pick as Harley Quinn? And he said, Lady Gaga, without hesitation. Um, and back then I was like, oh, oh, interesting choice. I, I, I don't think she was even acting back then. So I was just like, wow, okay. He's like, there's something about her, her look, her feel, her voice. He goes, I think she could play an amazing Harley Quinn. I'm like, okay. And now here we are. Um, and this might actually become a reality. I think this is kind of interesting and kind of fun. I like that they're embracing the weirdness and thinking of making it a musical. The only question is, James, can Joaquin Phoenix sing? Because I don't think we've ever heard him do that. I'm sure he can. He's an actor. He'll go to voice training. Uh, voice training. Because he lip sang when he played Johnny Cash, right? That was lip singing. Oh, I, I forgot about so, it. Uh, yeah. I, so I think I think so. I, he'll go to training and then they'll fix it up and post if they have to. I'm with you, though. I like that they're, they're embracing the weird because it's the Joker was the perfect uh, example of don't make a scene. Like it was a standalone film, right? It, it's not a movie that that when you watch like, oh, what's going to happen in the next one? It's kind of like, mm -hmm. okay, that's that's coming on. I'm good. Let's move on. And so I like that they're going to, they're not going to do the same thing. They're not just going to retread what we saw. They're going to go somewhere, somewhere completely different with it. And it, if the first one wasn't all in his head, you got to think this one might be all in his head if it's going to be a musical. So they're going to, so I like that. And if it is a musical, you might as well get Lady Lady Gaga to play her. Um, I, again, we talked about this a few weeks ago when we were speculating on Harley Quinn possibly being in Joker 2 or in the Arkham show, which rumors are that she's in both, but, but neither one of them will be played by Margot Robbie. I kind of feel like it would have been awesome to see Margot Ro Robbie go head to head with Joaquin Phoenix. Now, I understand you don't want to cross the streams, if you will, of mm -hmm. you know the Suicide Squad stuff and 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 the the joke joker is clearly its own standalone thing so you don't want to cross those streams but i think it would have been it would have been fun to see someone like margot robbie go toe to toe with joaquin phoenix i think that you're right that would have been fun uh they're two very like powerful high profile actors so seeing them on screen together would have been cool but you're right i want this i love this world because i just love that gotham is retro um and i i don't think you could believably take Margot Robbie uh, or her version of Harley, I mean, and put her in this retro world just because we've seen her yeah. kind of interacting just with the modern world already. Um, I love the bubble that this movie lives in. So keep that bubble up. But I have a feeling that this is not going to be as well received as the first one. I can just, yeah. you can smell it in the air, right? You can just smell, a, it's already... Before it's out, I can already smell the tidal wave of like this doesn't need to exist. And yeah, and the first one came out of nowhere, right? Mm -hmm. With like you know, like when you like my parents were like, the Joker movie was really good. I'm like, my parents hate every movie. I'm like, what? <laughs> You're talking about that? So yeah, I mean, the, the first one kind of caught everybody off guard. It was really good. Joaquin Phoenix, you know, blew it away. And I think the thing is though is is the only way to not redo it is by making it something different. And a musical seems to be that. And it makes sense in the world, and, and we'll see. I, I like the Lady Gaga casting, but I also I think I said to you, I'm like, maybe back when your friend first did it was one thing, but now I'm like, she just seems like the Hollywood choice. You know what I mean? Like, I feel like mm -hmm. she seems like a Hollywood choice for the part. 
Uh, and no knock on Lady Gaga. I just kind of wait. I, I I don't know. I think I'm at a point now where, you know what I just said about Margot Robbie said, is somebody like up and coming who can go to toe to toe with Walking Phoenix, and we're just like, oh my god. And then they be they're like the next star, you know? Like that's what I would I would love to see that again. She might not be playing Harley Quinn. She could just be playing whatever. She could be Harleen Quinzel, and in and in Joker's mind, she's Harley Quinn. Maybe that's the way they do. Who knows what they're going to do. She might not be a different character altogether. They might just be making somebody up. You have no idea. Um, Because they can go in any direction they want with the Joker, who is slowly becoming your favorite Batman villain. Oh, not slowly. No. (laughs) By the second. Yeah. But you, you, the next time we do a, a show, you're going to show up with Joker clown makeup on. And you're like, I am the Joker. I'm going to dress up it. as him for my wedding. It's confirmed. That's, that's um, I, I think if, uh, if anything, I, I think they would be smart to um, spend a bunch, as much time as possible with Dr. Harleen Quinzel because Margot Robbie did not give us that. No, and it, but and that wasn't what her character was her character right was. i mean i guess in the when the first suicide squad kind of the second one she's full-blown harley quinn and i just i think for i mean both of these joker 2 and the batman 2 or arkham show harley and quinzel fits in so well with what they're doing so well so why, why not all right let's go to our final topic today mr fantasia our Ooh. final topic is one that we talk about every four seconds ezra miller oh, i thought you were gonna say avatar 2 i'm out and, now, and for the first time ever, the 90s band was right. They are better than Ezra. Ezra, Ezra Miller, now for all the old people who got that joke, you're welcome. Uh, Ezra Miller, uh, reportedly now, the, the rumors are out that Warner Brothers are going to cut ties with him after this Flash movie. He will no longer portray the Flash in the DC universe. Oh, yeah, man, that DC universe is just... But the problem, apparently, Andrew, is they don't know what to do with the Flash movie right now. They, the, the rumor is they're going to release it theatrically, and they're just going to hope that this all dies down by the time it comes out, which I, I kind of am on board with. And the reason I say that is I saw some friends a couple weeks ago. That I think I brought this up last time. They have a 20-year-old son, and they, the Dumbledore movie came on the TV, and, he, and I was like, oh, freaking Ezra Miller. And he goes, oh, what's wrong? I like him as the Flash. He had no idea. It's a 20-year-old. Had no idea what was going on with Ezra Miller in Hawaii and choking people, like any idea. He had no idea at all because he doesn't care. He just cares about the movie that he's watching, right? Which is, I think a lot of people are like that. So on one hand, I do kind of think Warner Brothers is best if they just do that. Just let the situation resolve itself right now and quietly release that movie next. I mean, it's coming out in a year and a year on Wednesday. It's supposed to come out or Thursday. So you let that movie come out June 23rd, 2023, quietly the other option andrew is some people are saying they might just drop it directly to streaming i think that's disrespectful to michael keaton's return i think that needs to be we need to celebrate that return. i know a lot of people are like well, he's old man back. it doesn't freaking matter he's just, like that's a big deal in this one you know it's it was nice to see toby mcguire it's gonna be nice to see michael keaton back and i think that return is better suited theatrically than on hbo max this is my shocked face that this is happening I was like, is he shocked? Or is, you're so bored about talking with Ezra Miller. Then, um, No, I, I agree with you 100%. Not only is it disrespectful to do that to the return of Michael Keaton, because that's a big cinematic deal, but it's just disrespectful to everybody else who worked on it. The, the, crew, the crew toiled for... These are not small movies. The crew has toiled for hours and hours for they months. They still are! They're still toiling. <laughs> to make this gargantuan motion picture. And because one freaking goon goes to Hawaii and chokes people, they don't get that special feeling of like taking their family to the theater and being like, look what I worked on. No, don't do that. You, you want to make a statement like that, put it in the movie theaters and don't invite Ezra Miller to your premiere. Oh, you complete you complete you push Keaton and uh, and Supergirl, who apparently yes. apparently kills it in this movie. She apparently is great in this movie. So you you throw it on the shoulders of those two. I mean, she's going to be thrust into stardom probably after this anyway. So you throw her face up there. You make her the face of this movie, uh, and then and then and then uh, apparently there's a scene at the end um, that kind of 
when the multiverse kind of gets back to whatever the new norm is going to be for a little while. And people are saying in that moment, they should recast Ezra Miller and just reshoot that portion of it, which is like a small end credit tease. I Something needs to be done. I, I think though, arguably though, I think you could just have Ezra Miller as a flash through this entire movie. And then the next flash movie just, and then when the flash, by the way, we fired Ezra Miller, he'll no longer be back as the flash. We won't announce a new flash until after. So you let the movie come out. They're like, your new flash is actor X, right? That's what you do. Um, Cause you also, you don't want to be like, we fired the flash and now the flash is going to be played by actor X. Go see this one with Ezra Miller. Like, I think you got it. You also have to wait till like, you can cast him right. Like today you can cast, you could be like, you are a new flash. We're not going to announce it until June 25th. Like, next year like you just wait um that's how i see it but i think if they do i mean i think it could also work if they recast him in that but that could also add more confusion because like i just said my friends who had no idea what was going on watching the movie like why did the flash change well you know it's like that could be even more confusing whereas terrence howard or edward norton it's less confusing when you know you just the next movie is like this is a different actor you, you just accept it as a different actor well, the thing about Iron Man 2 is they handled it so well. I mean, they let everybody know, yep, we got a new guy, there's a new actor. And then in the movie, Don Cheadle's first line of dialogue where he shows up at the the uh, Senate hearing or whatever, and Tony's like, oh, there you are. Don Cheadle says, look, it's me, I'm here, let's move on. Like, as, as a fourth wall yeah. kind of thing, like, look, I'm War Machine now. Like, let's all just deal with that and move on. Um, and that scene you're talking about, the final scene of Flash, whether it's a credit scene or whatever, that's the most crucial thing. That that scene is the most crucial scene that WB needs to get right right now because that is, as we talked about before on on like Superhero Tuesday and whatnot, like that's the the scene that can tell the world what direction the DCEU is going in. Uh, this is the time and place to do it. So. If you're going to do crazy things like recasting someone, that's the place to put it in because it's going to get, you know, it's going to fit in well with all the other housekeeping that's being done. They have that opportunity gift wrap for them. So just do it. Just put them in there. Um, make that part of the announcement. But yeah. there's nothing wrong with recasting this person if it's just going to cause you more and more trouble down the road. I mean, look how long yeah. it took to get this one movie made. We've been hearing about the Flash movie since before the first Suicide Squad movie. Before the Flash TV show, and the Flash TV show is wrapping up season nine. Yeah. Or it's coming into season nine or whatever. Yeah. So, yeah, it, it, it's about time they've, you know, they twiddled their thumbs a little too long. But again, DC was, the the, the DC, and I, Man of Steel is probably my favorite. Uh, there's a few, but Man of Steel is so good. But the problem with Man of Steel is it was never designed to be the start of a shared universe. I know they threw in like Wayne Enterprises on the satellite, which was probably done like the week before it came out. Like, sure, there's not, but it was never meant to be that, right? It was like Christopher Nolan's Dark Knight movies were never meant to start a shared universe either. Like, that's what Man of Steel was. It was the Superman version of those movies. Yeah. And we got it. And then they kind of, and I think Batman, I think Batman and Superman. I think that flowed seamlessly, to be honest. Like, I thought the way they, they connected them was seamless. Like, the reason why Batman was all up in arms was there. But then they started mm -hmm. shoving in, like, look at all these other meta humans. You're like, okay, well, this is getting a little bit. But it was never designed to do it. And I, like I said, I did think they did Superman properly. Even uh, Wonder Woman, for the most part, I think she was done pretty well in Batman v Superman. A little bit more rushed than Batman. Didn't work as well as Batman in, a, in the long run. But I think. I mean, her solo movie, whatever. But like in the movie itself, I think Batman worked seamlessly in that movie. Um, so that that was the hurdle that they had to get over from the start was, and it was very Zack Snyder. And Zack Snyder is a polarizing director. Like he's very, he is a visionary director. And either you like that vision or you don't like that vision. There's not too many people who are in the middle of those visions there. So, and I like it. So I was all on board with all of them. But I know people that weren't. They're like these movies bore me. They're, you know, I love his long. vision. I just, I wish he would use 50% less slow motion. Yeah, but you know, there's other movies that have, his slow motion is more am amped up though because there are other movies that have more slow motion but they feel like they have less slow motion. Mm. 
I actually, I read that and I was like, interesting. Yeah, no, his slow motion is amped up because I think whatever it's whatever, it is, but he's very visual. So I think that was their hurdle. So they're trying to rectify that now, but it might be too little too late. And if they are going to rectify it, then what's the point of all these movies anyway, if you don't know what your direction is going forward. So maybe Ezra Miller is doing them a giant favor by being a giant dick. Yeah. I don't know. No. Yeah. He, anyway, they have to sort that out uh, for a lot of reasons. Um, I don't think they're going to make any more of the Fantastic Beast movies, so they don't have to worry about him in that franchise. Uh, it's just That's the Flash or or them in that franchise, and you have to. I haven't seen the Dumbledore one yet. Me neither. Uh, but it made no money. It is on Crave here in Canada, in Canada, so we can watch it. It came out. It's the forty five day window is on HBO Max as well. Um, mm-hmm. But I I don't know. I mean, I think people were pissed off. I think the movies are. I like the movies. They're not amazing though. They're just they're good movies that I'm like these are enjoyable. But Johnny Depp, was, but they got rid of Johnny Depp. They pulled a Disney and got rid of Johnny Depp without you know without having their eggs in a row there and people got i think people got pissed off i think they uh johnny johnny depp whether he's a good person or not the fans the the movie goers like johnny depp or or they might not go to his movies but if they if they get he gets removed from a movie they're going to go even less i think that's the way it should be if they're loyal they're loyal in some capacity so who knows um but i don't know just well we won't get into any of that uh, so there you have it. But any else? Anything else you want to say about Ezra Miller? Or anything else? Um, I think it's just you're right. This is like a blessing in disguise for Warner Brothers. Uh, let them use this to help them kickstart whatever they have to do. Has there been any announcement from these? Uh, who bought them out? I can't remember. But weren't they supposed to make some kind of announcement? Like we're changing things. Yeah, they are. They a lot of people are gone. Walter Hamad is still there. Um, Toby Emmerich's there. There's a lot of changes. They are looking for someone to be the head of DC, though. They want to put D- they want a Kevin Feige in the DC. They want a Kevin Feige type person in the in the uh, in the in the that position. Hire Andrew. He'll be like, we need to have Ms. Marvel show up, and we need Listen, to also have Warner Brothers. If you're listening, and you are. Whoever you have in mind right now, I guarantee you, I'm less expensive. That's true. He works for Big Macs. Well, at Baconators, James. I'm not uh, a barbarian. Okay. Baconators. I have some class. Uh, about... <laughs> I don't think I've ever had a Baconator. <laughs> Once you go Wendy's, you never go Bendy's. I I saw you eat a burger with peanut butter or Reese peanut butter cups on it. So yeah, that place we went to it's uh, in yeah. Port Credit. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. That they could have they could have stood to put more peanut butter on it. As far as I'm concerned. All right, that's gonna wrap up this show. I don't want to hear about this anymore. Um, Andrew, thanks for joining me on this manic Monday. It's just another Manic Monday. Everybody give us a like and a subscribe. Yeah, please. Please do. Yeah, all right. Thanks, everybody. Thanks for watching. Thank you, Andrew. And may you all be the master of your own universe. Gaga.